Okay, hello everyone. Today is October 11th, 2021. Uh, this is a meeting of the SIG Network Policy API subgroup to SIG Network. This is a CNCF certified meeting. So let's please be nice to each other and have a productive talk today. So getting started, I can go ahead and share my screen. We don't have any new issues at triage, so we'll hop straight into some discussion about reviving um, some features we haven't talked about in a while, such as uh, FQDN, service count selectors, and service selectors. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can hand it over to you, Vinay. Yeah, so this is nothing new. I mean, most of us do know about it. It's just like I was trying to get it revived. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to would like to see an open OSS-driven definition of what the CRD looks like. So in the cap, and as you can see, Gobin, uh, who was working on this thing, is no longer involved in security. So I've taken over from him. Okay. And I was talking to Tim about it, and Tim said, so "What is the status?" I said, "Oh, yeah, we've been sitting on it." So I decided like put it up on the. I spoke with uh, so I we attend the Thursday meeting for the cluster network policy. Mm -hmm. I brought it up there, so it doesn't make sense to just discuss it there or here. So it was suggested that I bring it up here. So the, yeah. the goal, the, these are pretty straightforward caps. One is for uh, mostly, so when I say FQDN, we're just trying to keep the scope only to FQDN, not to L7, because L7 opens up a whole um, set of issues that I didn't want to like, get into. Just FQDN is basically like an egress and force, and there are some use cases defined. And uh, the second cap that I've attached below that is about using service selector instead of in addition to namespaces. So there are some specific use cases I defined that. Okay, I can. Sorry, I switched you emails. Know. You had already shared it with me. Okay. Yeah, so I'll tell you what, I, I can, since this has been sitting there for a while, I did not go through the bookkeeping to make these docs all open. What I'll do is I'll put it in the, I'll not use my Google account, so it's easily accessible to everyone. So anyone wants to use it, let me know. And I'm happy to like add you as um, co-authors on this. There are already like a bunch of people are already working on it. So here, um, share. Uh, and what it also should be shared. Okay. So let me know if let me know if you can click on this, Andrew. Uh, yeah. Let me pull up the messages. Yep, yeah, that worked. Yeah. Cool. So besides you, Vene, um, is there anyone from the original group still working on these, um, like from Google? Yeah. So service account is something that is, uh, we use that quite a bit on GCP and we are just trying to extend that concept to uh, also in Kubernetes because it makes it easier for us to um, define identity-based security instead of like labels. So because there is like, so there are some use cases that I've defined. Mm -hmm. There's two use cases actually, I wrote it down. So I'm involved, I've been involved in this particular cap from beginning. So I right. can, I'm happy to uh, incorporate other use cases if anyone has any suggestions. The, the key point of this cap is to, we use namespace selectors, we use um, uh, part selectors. But what we want to do is we want to assert based on the identity because a lot of times you can associate the Kubernetes uh, service account with like, you know, underlying cloud infra identity. So you can do a lot more things. For example, in our use case, we have Kubernetes uh, workloads trying to reach out to uh, GCP to make certain calls for like, you know, AI, ML, like a spanner access and things like that, right? So this is all tied to service account. And we figured, so you, we need to assert the identity, right? So, so we want. So this, we figured it would be good to have uh, pods be selected based on the the service service account. Mm -hmm. So that is the gist of this high level gist of this of this cap. Yeah, and I can I can add some pictures just also, but this has been sitting in my um, in, in cold storage for a while, so I just decided to bring it up. So what I'm looking for. Uh, number one is the interest from folks who want to work with us. And then number two, how do we want, should I use this meeting to set it up or should I, should we have like what the cluster network policy guys did, spin up a separate meeting, try to get those things resolved there and bring it back here. 
Um, I think for now it's, it's fine to use this meeting. Um, it's been okay. somewhat quiet. We've been using it as a CMP kind of pinging ground. Um, yep. I say for now, let's use this. And then if the need arises like uh, further on in the pipeline, we can spin up a new one pretty easily. Okay. Um, yeah. And I, I think these are both great ideas. Uh, I, I obviously support them. I think they're both something that's going to span basically any resource so CMP or NP. Um, yeah. Now the question is going to be, um, again, it's going to come back to how, how do we integrate these changes into the existing um, API, right? Exactly. Yeah. So that's the hardest thing. And, you know, I don't want to say it, but I'm going to say it is like, I think <laughs> the main, I think that problem can be solved a lot of it. If we keep, if we get some people with their hands on status, right? So network policy status is something that we could uh, report to the user whether or not the CNI supports the up-to-date version of, of what we're providing as an API, um, including service selectors and um, service count selectors, et cetera. Right, for example, uh, if, you, if you show the FQDN cap, right? I just wanted to show you that. So right now there is, there are, I think if we see, there are uh, one option was to like, you know, use a separate API. And I think we will try, so there's one under the first option, I think proposal is use network policy itself, right? Right. And then, but the, obviously we don't have selectors which says, you know, FQDN, right? So this is what you're saying. If you do that, you're saying if it fails, mm -hmm. the CNA doesn't support, just spit out the status message. Right. Right. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Basically, if you give a, um, if you tried to give an FQDN selector here um, that wasn't supported by the CNI, then the, then this, yeah, like you said, the status would just say not supported or something along those lines. Um, okay. Uh, to be honest with you, like we haven't really hashed all that out. There's been a lot of talk about of the status field and how that would work, but nobody's really owned it. Um, I would love to, but right now I just don't have the bandwidth to. So. Um, so, so let me ask on. this question. So we don't have status today, right? We do not. Whatever. We have a initial stab at a cat from Ricardo. I see. Okay. Um, so he kind of started it cause he thought it was going to bind him for port ranges, uh, to become moved to alpha, uh, sorry, moved to beta and then GA, but that ended up not being a blocker for him. So he's kind of not working on it anymore. I see. Um, Maybe you should reach out to him then. Yeah, I mean, I think he's looking for help. I, I think he's he's around to help out with it. He just doesn't want to own it, doesn't have the bandwidth. Um, I, it's you, also something that we've been talking about in respect to CMP as well. Um, I see. So, so can you just, if you don't mind, Andrew, can you just put a link to that cap from Ricardo? Yeah, yeah. It's in the agenda and I'll put it in the chat real quick. Yeah. And there's been a lot of discussion previously about status. Um, I think it'd be nice for someone to go back. I, I might even be able to this week or next week, go back and kind of coalesce all the talk around status we've had. So Dan Winship was the first one. He tried to implement a um, kept for status slash micro versioning um, within our API. The micro versioning thing kind of went up in flames. It's, it, it got too complicated too quickly. Um, and um the status, I think if the user stories are right, the status will work. Now trying to use status as, as a user story, such as um, I don't want my CI job to run until my network policies are, are implemented. Like mm -hmm. that sort of user story, he's kind of deemed impossible um, to implement for a few reasons. And I'll go find the com conversation on it, but mainly because of the fact that um, labels are so transient and like you can't how would you know if a pod like had a network policy applied um, like how would you know to update the network policy status if the pods label changed like the, nothing changed in the status but a pod is no longer selected by it so mm -hmm. it may not be implemented implemented anymore there's a couple corner cases like that that I see. kind of poked holes in in the status kept originally okay so yeah, just reach out to Jay, um, or sorry, Ricardo, and 
if you have any questions, reach out to me as well. I am still poking around Red Hat and uh, and opens and really the Kubernetes community in general to find someone to take it up and like really own it. Um, but if not, like I said, eventually I'll be okay. able to. That's good. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, no, thank you for bringing these back up. Um, I think they have a lot of merit and obviously a lot of CNIs are supporting various iterations of them already. So be super useful to have upstream. Are there any questions for anyone about um, FQDN or service count selectors or service selector questions in general? Cool. So, uh, sorry, I, I just had a question for Rene on the FQDN yeah. uh, selector. I remember at one point of time, Gobin had yeah. some contro controller work done. Uh, yes. uh, so, and I think it was like in some GKE repository. Is, right. is that like a fully functional thing or was, was it just like a POC? And it, it was mostly a POC, but we do have that implementation, but the thing is we don't offer it as a product. Correct. Is that something that still requires? Uh, so I, I just wanted to clarify on one thing: with, whether that controller uh, listens to these FQDN policies and converts them into Kubernetes network policies, or is it something that uh, actually affects the traffic? Like uh, you know, is is a CNI independent way of including these FQDN? It's a CNI independent way. So what we what it does is it sits, it runs outside. Mm -hmm. I think if, if I'm not mistaken, it even runs. Um, I, I need to go back and look at it because it's open source. There is a GitHub where this code is sitting. So mm -hmm. what it does is it reads FQDN policies and then keeps a watch on the DNS. And then as and when there's any change, it will go tell um, the Kubernetes cluster to, hey, update, uh, add this uh, IP address to your allow list. Okay, so, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it does it does it allow so does it automatically add those ip addresses to your allow list or this is something that was like a notification for the cnis to then update their policies? exactly it's more of the okay. latter but in our case okay. it's a little bit more vertically integrated yes got it, got it. Yeah. basically you send a notification based on then that way it frees you up from whatever cni you have you can like if you're using calico or cilium or whatever you want to use then mm -hmm. the behavior being, becomes a little different okay but it still requires like a CNI to actually enforce that security policy. Exactly, exactly. But the DNS uh, itself, like the job of this controller is to take in that example, googleapis.com and then resolve it to IP addresses. Exactly. And those IP addresses are then fed into these uh, CNI. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, and okay. I think the, the, the some of the issues, I mean, this was done more as a reference implementation. One of our mm -hmm. uh, strategic customer engineers went ahead and implemented that. So the main drawback, I guess, is like the how often do you poll and what is the, how long is the window before um, what the state of the world is and what the intent is? How long do they stay out of loop before they get reconciled? And that kind of stuff is still, is still an open issue with that implementation. Because if you do it every 30 minutes, then you have a chance that for 30 yeah. minutes, you may be out of sync. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I think uh, for this particular aspect, uh, uh, we also recently worked on the FQDN policy, which was mm -hmm. upstream in 1.13 and yeah. uh, uh, I think uh, Yang, who is on PTO right now, but he'll mm -hmm. be back end of the October or maybe in two weeks. Okay. I think he worked on it. So he, I know he was interested in also taking right. this upstream. So maybe I'll, you know, once he comes back, I think you can you know, get in touch with him and I, I'll ask him to join the Monday meetings again and maybe right. he can help you. Right, so Abhishek, what that would be great because we're so, so what we want is what I'm primarily looking for is an agreement on the the CRD, so the API, right? So like I think if we can, the way I'm seeing it is based on what Andrew described, like once we figure out a way to incorporate the status field in the network policy, then we don't necessarily need to create a new CRD for this. We can piggyback on top of network policy and use the status to like indicate support or no support for this feature. I think that is what I think makes sense. Do you agree? Uh, that's a little, I mean, Easily. yeah. <laughs> okay. I think then it comes into the talk of if you're gonna do that, why not build it, build it into V2 if that is a network policy V2. Like, like status field for network policy V1 
is is a little less obtrusive than adding like new selectors right it's it's changing semantics of how network policy can work so we've had this discussion a few times and, and this is why there's two proposals i think here legacy wise like i'm pretty sure we originally were proposing one right for, forever ago and then basically everyone was like this probably isn't going to ever get into the ga uh api so so let me ask this question andrew so i don't know what the status of network policy v2 is where do we stand on that it's been pretty stalled ever since uh basically prasad and nadim from juniper were working on it and they haven't been here in a few weeks so we have some user stories and preliminary investigation there but that's mm -hmm. kind of it um it hasn't it's been stalled a little bit after that i think they were waiting to see uh what happened with cmp in a few regards um and now that cmp is kind of unblocked and moving forward i would assume it's can move forward but i haven't heard from them lately okay so maybe so abhishek so how about this thing right so we will continue to for for network policy whether we use a separate crd or like you know whatever that we can have a separate conversation but in in cluster network policy do you think does it make sense to bring fkdn in there yeah i think that depends on how we want to do eventually because if we are thinking in an uh, external crd or sorry a different crd for uh, fqdn then might as well do it uh, out of cnp as well but uh -huh. uh, if yeah, yeah. we want if we want this to be part of uh, network policy v2 then i think this is something that we can in try to include with cnps because then you know we can take some feedback that we get from cnp into the v2 structure and uh, use that uh, yeah. but i but i haven't given like enough thought to actually answer your question by the way but uh, uh, no, the thing is if we are eventually going to make it as a part of v2 then i'm thinking like since cnp is still in the like in the early stages does it make, just in terms of parity does it make sense to put it in there and then we continue to push see i i don't think network policy v2 is going to get uh, will come to a, a consensus or like you know, a some final state in the yeah. in the next I mean, one or two I'm months saying, yeah maybe what we can do is like a separate cap but try to include it in the cnp definition that we are trying to agree upon on the other yeah th that so that's what i'm saying if if it is too much of a hassle we can always maybe yeah, i'll try to make it this third stage yeah 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 i think that might be a better idea because okay. that will also give like us a good indication of how extensible cnp api is exactly right so so i think we can we can try to do that yeah and now currently anyway cmp is not addressing north south traffic so I don't really know how FQDN would would fit in there unless we were talking like internal DNS yeah, resolution. Yeah, that, that's why I think a cap would be like a you know to expand the scope of the CNPs into right. this, and I think eventually we would also need to solve the north south with CNP, but not of course not with this cap, but. Uh, because i still feel it's a uh, it's it's pretty you know we we say that cnp is like a guardrail on network policies but you have that escape uh, right. mechanism with ip blocks in network policies which we cannot block with cnp that feels very strange to me uh, but uh, but you know one one step at a time no i agree i think right. um i i i think really the uh, problem with north south traffic is like i think its use cases deserve its own resource um that's kind of why we split it out at the beginning um but we can look more at that as we progress with cmp so a newbie question here so, so cmp doesn't support north south just because it hasn't been addressed yet or is it not been even thought about it's been thought about i think one of the at least speaking with some of the creators of network policy they said or when I said creators network policy, when I spoke with Dan Winship and Dan Williams about it, um, they kind of pushed saying that the addition of IP block to original network policy was somewhat of a mistake. Like it's overloading that API to try to express too much. And they recommended in order to move the CMP cap along and get consensus, let's start with just the East West traffic use cases and then possibly look at adding a resource to act as a moat around the cluster at a later date. Because when we start talking ingress, egress, north, south, um, 
there's a bunch of other rules that apply. Like it's not just like then the question of like pre-snap, post-snap, um, different mechanism for ingress via uh, services and the gateway API, like that all kind of comes into, into play. And, and if you leave it out, it doesn't, it makes it a lot simpler. So that's where we're at. All right, thanks. I think that's about right, right, Abhishek? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think you truly covered everything. Cool. So yeah, it's it's basically an example of nothing's been easy in the development of CMP. There's been a lot of hard choices to make, but um, in order to get, get the thing moving, we've had to do some make some of those choices. Um, yeah. Any other questions there? Vinay, I shared what we have for V2. I agree with you. I think it's moving slow, very slowly. Um, so it'd be harder to get something done. I think really if you, if you wanted to get the FQDN policy done quickly, like adding its own resource would be the quickest way to do that. Now, is that the most elegant way? I don't think so. Um, right. But we're kind I mean, of tra yeah, trapped I think in a box. Yeah, exactly. I and mean, I think if we can, if we think it makes sense to go with its own independent CRD, we can do that. But I want to make sure that the, the deltas are small enough that once we, do, we incorporate that into network policy V2 or CNP, they're like no issues, right? I mean, it should be smart. Right, exactly. We want to make it easier for the user <laughs> at yeah. the end of the day. Okay. I'm going to think about it some more. I, I haven't really thought about uh, FQDN or service selector yeah. in quite a while because we've been stuck on CMP. Um, but anyway, cool. Yeah, I'm glad you're bringing it back up. And I'll, I also know some people who have implemented OpenShift's kind of version of, of FQDN um, called Egress Firewall. And I'll ask them if they want to, if they want to come up and get involved or if you need any help, I can definitely ask them as well too. Okay. That'll be awesome. Thank you. Yeah, cool. No worries. Okay, so we've kind of covered network policy status today. I won't harp on it too much more. Um, basically, we still just need kind of more people to check it out. I posted the KEP again. Ricardo's more than happy to help. Um, if you reach out to him in Slack, he's usually around. Well, he's always around. He's the man. Um, otherwise, I don't have anything else on the agenda for today. Um, Abhishek, is there anything you would like to cover regarding CMP with the group or are we still, I mean, we're still really just updating the cap, so. Uh, yeah, I did push uh, a you know, latest revision based on the, uh, I mean, just to reflect the latest uh, proposal. And um, I believe the remainder of things uh, for that cap is now to add the samples, which uh, I think Sanji was uh, going to add. Um, and then beyond that, I think there are a couple of to-dos like the default rule handling and uh, and whether to add like audit logging policy or as part of this solution or not. Uh, but I, I, that I think we we agreed that we'll probably have a separate cap for it. So maybe maybe that's about it. Then I guess it, it that's the default rule naming. Sorry, default rules is the only to-do item there uh, in oh. terms of in terms of uh, like designing or, or how to do that. Yeah, agreed. Do you mind just sending the link to that cap in the, or putting in the agenda so that if anyone want to ch wants to check it out at the current mm -hmm. level? Yes, let me do they, that. They can. I know we have it like over and over again in here. Actually, we might have it, right? I don't know if it's already a part of the The signet cap. Oh no, those are signet caps. Is that like? Oh yeah, that should be the one. I think it's this one. Two five two two. Yeah, it is cool. I'm yeah. gonna give this a read tonight. Yeah. As a little bedtime reading. <laughs> yeah. And and fix whatever you feel like is worth fixing because okay. you have the uh, you have the. Uh, I have the rights. I have rights the power. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. No, I, I'm. I'll do my best, but I'm not a I'm not a brilliant proofreader, that's for sure. I stick to I like to stick to proofreading code, not writing, <laughs> which is scary. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, cool. Yeah. So if anyone's interested, uh, CMP 
we're just pushing forward on the cap, getting it back to the point where we can really hopefully get it approved and move forward. Um, that's the status so far. So exciting things. Um, hopefully that will free us up to also work on some other things. Um, the only other thing I wanted to talk about was I was going through and closing some stale PRs from our SIG network policy API repo. Um, I'd love to still add some more stuff here. Um, open to uh, adding, you know, examples around network policy, cool tools with regarding network policy that people have written like Cyclonus and other things. Um, I'd really love to see the use of this expand a little bit. Um, and I think it will as we continue to add more things. But um, for now, just wanted to give that a shout out. If people want to check out this repo and have any ideas for how we can make it better, um, or if there's resources we can add, um, please let me know. Is anyone at KubeCon? Like in person? We were talking about that earlier. Eric couldn't make it. I didn't get to go. Um, you didn't. You didn't get to go either. No, I mean they did ask me, but I said I don't want to be in person. <laughs> or at least I chose to do virtual. So I have, I have the full virtual pass. Probably cool. going to check out. I have agenda set. So I'll probably check those links out. Um, but I think there are a couple of people who I know have are in LA right now. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, there's like, a, I know like one or two that are in LA, but yeah. not, not, not many. Not many, yeah. It's kind of a bummer. Hopefully next year we'll be uh, fully yeah. back in action. Hope so. Cool. Does anyone have anything else today? If not, we'll uh, get some time back. Got, all right, thanks. Got, got plenty of work to do. I appreciate all y'all's time today. Um, and as per usual, just reach out on Slack if you have any other questions. All right, bye. Take care, guys. Everyone, bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you, bye.